What is going on guys? Welcome to Homecraft Cocktails, cocktails you can make from the comfort of your home. My name is Briss and this week we'll be going over the Gimlet. Like most classic cocktails, the Gimlet goes back hundreds of years. Sometime around the 17th century, English sailors were beginning to understand that citrus fruits were great for preventing scurvy, which was a very, very common disease among sailors. Today, with modern medicine, we now know that scurvy is caused by vitamin C deficiency. And this is the exact vitamin that is found in citrus fruits. What about you, Bart? Homer? Homer? Lethargy? Skin spots? Spongy gums? This man's got scurvy! But we've only been at sea one day. When's the last time you had citrus? I had a mimosa at brunch a few years ago. So again, going back to the 1800s, once they realized that citrus fruits were really good at preventing scurvy, the British Constitution actually developed a law called the Merchant Shipping Act of 1867, which made it mandatory for all British ships to carry rations of lime juice for their crew. Now, of course, this was before the days of refrigerators, so in order to preserve the lime juice, they actually combined it with rum. But in 1867, a guy by the name of Lachlan Rose developed a patent that actually preserved lime juice with the use of sugars instead of alcohol. In order to give the product a wider appeal, he actually packaged it in a nice, you know, aesthetic looking bottle and named it Rose's Lime Cordial. A product that is still alive and well to this day over 150 years later, and also one that you might be familiar with if you've ever been to the alcohol section of a grocery store. So legend has it that while lower ranking crew members drank rum, the higher ranking naval officers actually drank gin, and thus they naturally mixed the lime cordial with the gin to make gimlets. So yes, when you boil it down, the creation of the gimlet is purely out of circumstance and necessity rather than one of, you know, creative bartending. Originally, this was before they had freezers, so there was no way to store ice, and also the recipe called for a 50-50 split, so it proved to be a very poor concoction, especially in comparison to today's more modern recipe. Since then, the availability of ice, as well as a more balancing of the ingredients, has allowed the gimlet to become a staple in the cocktail world. And as far as the name goes, a gimlet is just a small tool that is used to tap wooden barrels that contain spirits, which obviously there were plenty of those on naval ships. And now, with that brief history lesson out of the way, let's get down to actually making the drink. So first things first, you wanna start off by putting ice in your shaker. Then you'll want to pour two ounces of gin into your shaker. After that, then you want to do three-fourths of an ounce of lime juice. After that, then you want to do three-fourths of an ounce of simple syrup. With all three ingredients in your shaker, then you'll want to just shake and strain into your cocktail glass. After straining, then all you'll need to do is just garnish with the lime wheel. And there you have a gimlet. And now that we have our drink, let's give it a taste. Not bad, not bad. The Gimlet is a very decent, well-rounded drink. By no means does it have a bevy of different, you know, flavor profiles to choose from. You know, it's only a, a three ingredient cocktail. So you can obviously experiment with different gins and different levels of simple syrup to lime juice ratios. But by and large, it's a pretty standard basic cocktail. But what it lacks in creativity it more than makes up for it in its comfortability. This is a very easy to drink cocktail. I've given this drink to multiple people that I know and people that don't even usually drink and they definitely enjoy this drink. So by no means do you have to be someone that has a, an experienced palate to be able to appreciate it. It's just very straightforward, straight to the point, 
sweet, not too sweet, tart, not too tart. And if you find that this is not hitting hard enough for you, you can also kick it up a notch by making it two and a half ounces of gin and half of an ounce of lime juice and some preserve each. And keep in mind that if you do decide to use the lime cordial like they did back in the 1800s, that you don't need to add the simple syrup on top of that because the sweetener is already in there. So instead of doing uh, three fourths of an ounce of both lime juice and simple syrup, just do an ounce and a half of the lime cordial and you're good to go. You might notice that the drink is very similar to a daiquiri in terms of look, taste, um, and feel. That is because they're the exact same ingredients except you are exchanging the rum in a daiquiri with the gin of a gimlet. They both belong to the sour family and all a sour is is a spirit mixed with a sweetener and a citrus juice. Only thing is the daiquiri is a rum sour, the gimlet is a gin sour. And that's pretty much it in regards to the drink. I mean, it's very standard, very average, no, nothing extreme about it in any regard. It's kind of like picking Mario in Mario Kart. Simple, doesn't excel in any one particular area, but still enjoyed and loved by all. So thank you guys for watching this week's episode, and I'll catch you next week for the next round. Peace.